Of all the classic horrors of the 1970s, people usually tend to remember Don't Look Now, The Omen, and of course, The King of Them All, The Exorcist. But in 1979, a very different but dark and uncompromising horror film was released, The Amityville Horror. This film has kind of been forgotten over the years and didn't get the best reviews back in 1979. But in this video, I'm going to delve into why the Amityville Horror is an underrated hidden gem that deserves a second look. This video is requested by channel member John Eastwood. If you'd like to request what I review on the channel, please consider becoming a channel member by pressing that join button and join the request tier for a small amount each month. Or if you just want to support me anyway, join one of the lower tiers. The Amityville Horror is based on Jay Anderson's 1977 book of the same name, which detailed the alleged paranormal experiences of the Lutz family, who briefly lived in the Amityville New York home where Ronald DeFeo Jr. committed mass murder of his young family in 1974. One thing you'll notice right away is director Stuart Rosenberg is determined to make the house itself the main antagonist of the movie and the many shots of the house from the outside are incredibly haunting. He makes it look truly terrifying through the lighting, direction and of course the fact that houses themselves can be pretty scary looking. This takes me back to those days as a kid where I'd walk past a few houses every evening that I would find very creepy to look at. Buildings can be incredibly looming and certain designs stand out from others in a really odd and disturbing way. And it happens here, this house feels like it's just bearing down on you. And of course, the real story of the amateur horror suggested that the house was cursed and caused that man to do what he did on that fatal night. So of course, making the building look as scary as possible was essential. And they really pull it off, especially in the shots where the lighting is red. It literally looks devilish. James Brolin is really good as George Lutz, this man who has been completely overtaken by whatever is behind these sinister forces. George! What happened? I was just dreaming. I'm sorry if I woke you. He starts off very likeable and good hearted, and this is why his descent into evil is all the more effective, because we know he's a genuinely well meaning person. Brolin's performance is so good because while he's very disturbing, he still manages to convince us that the real George Lutz is still inside somewhere. So you're really rooting for him to overcome this. This idea reminds me of The Shining which came after in 1981 when Jack Nicholson's character also loses control to menacing forces. However, James Brolin doesn't jump headfirst into frantic insanity like Nicholson. So I respect this film for showing a more reserved and disturbing look at a character losing his mind. Broden is quiet and looming and to be fair scares the crap out of you simply by sitting there just staring off into space. It's a physical performance but not one of constant scares, instead it's all about facial expressions and getting underneath your skin. He manages to scare you simply by being quiet and those sorts of characters are sometimes the most scary, the ones who aren't saying anything and could snap at any moment. The film explores the true horror of watching someone you love become someone else slowly but surely changing right in front of you. You really feel for Kathy, played by Margot Kidder, seeing her husband morph into something she doesn't understand and can't control. And the film, instead of being a conventional ghost movie of scares, it's more a story about loss of control and the devastating effect of these experiences, the trauma and confusion of it all. And I respect that because it's quite a different approach to a lot of ghost story movies. Margot Kidder, best known for her iconic role as Lois Lane in the original Superman movies. And how big are you? How tall are you? Uh, about 6'4". Her and James Brolin make a very believable and charming couple, and Kathy's love for George really shines through in the tender scenes. And that's a testament to Margot Kidder since she didn't really enjoy working on this film. Going on to do interviews where she called it a piece of shit. But there you go. Cheers, Margot. On that edge of serious camp, all the time. The supporting cast are very good here too, and some of the scariest and most disturbing moments are actually the occasions where the priest, played by Rod Steiger, and the nun, played by Irene Daly, are forced to flee from the house. The priest is ambushed by flies and then hears a malevolent voice, and this is one of those moments that genuinely made me jump. Get out. 
Irene Daly is great as Helena, Kathy's aunt, who's also a nun. And these moments explore a horror that is perhaps underutilised, the true terror of encountering someone who is horrified and you don't know why. It's like, what the hell, why is this person so scared? And just being so unprepared in how to deal with someone who is just telling you, no, I need to go, I need to go, and not taking no for an answer with honest, true fear on their face. To me, that's such a scary thought. If my family member or loved one did that, I wouldn't be able to handle it seeing them like that. Their entire demeanour changing and fear literally taking them over. It would probably haunt me for years and I would never stay at the place that inspired that reaction. I respect the direction the film took. It's not really about jump scares or seeing ghosts. It's more about the visceral regression of this house. For example, when the window falls onto one of the kid's fingers. It's like the house itself wants to inflict harm on these people. The house is literally fighting them being there. And of course, if the ghosts are physically attacking children, that gives the movie a sense of severity and, and grit and dread that is missing in others. Usually in films, it's just the kids see the ghosts. Whereas in this film, the ghosts attack the kids and draw blood. A really disturbing scene that focuses on the psychological side of things is where the babysitter gets locked in the closet and the daughter, Amy, played by Natasha Ryan, just sits there blankly staring and refuses to let her out as she well and truly freaks out. And I have to take my hat off to the actress, Amy Wright, because you really feel for the character and believe her fear. Again, it's not about seeing the ghosts, but about what they're doing and what they're willing to do. The babysitter eventually has bloody hands from knocking on the door so hard. I think there's something so dark and deeply affecting about someone busting their hands open knocking on a door. To be that scared and frantic that you're willing to hurt yourself is just a horrible thought. And this is just a spectacular horror scene in my opinion. The amateur vul horror has a pretty intense third act in which George and the family dog are trying to escape. It's a touching rescue, but you're really on the edge of your seat, unsure whether he will manage it because, like I said, the house is quite literally alive and fighting against him. And you can just feel the house trying to either drown him, scold him, cause him to kill others or himself, whatever it can do. It's just a horrific, unrelenting force. Family are outside, waiting in the car, and George is fighting to rescue the dog. There's nothing but purity at the core of what George is trying to do, so it really is a battle of pure good and evil. Blood oozes from the walls and down the staircase, and eventually, George falls through the basement stairs into a pit of black sludge. I mean, it's just mental, and you honestly don't know if he's going to get out alive. And I think this is quite a unique final sequence, as usually in ghost films, it's all the family together. But this combination is all about whether George can get out of the house and rejoin his family. So it's just a really all-encompassing, emotional and claustrophobic final act. If you're into 70s horror and horror in general, and you haven't seen this film, you need to watch the amateur horror. It's not perfect, and it's very slow moving at times, but it's a really great snapshot of raw, experimental and unpredictable horror from a time that hopefully never gets forgotten. Thanks for watching and please consider pressing subscribe for more analysis and retrospectives on cult and classic films and I will see you guys next time.